by the branches, he who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed. to the fire, except that he comes through me, yeah, so let not mercy, let not mercy. and truth, and truth. say forsake you, forsake. say forsake
and our guests and friends have joined us this morning to worship our great God. We're so excited that out of the millions of churches that are across the world, you decided to worship our great God with us. And listen, this is the day that the Lord has made and God has something great to say to us this morning. So we encourage you to get involved in the service. Even though you're at home, God is still with you in your living room and in your kitchen and wherever you're tuning in. So open that Bible, stand up and worship, clap your hands, sing out loud and rejoice to our great God. You know, we really can't wait to see your faces back in the building. Even those who've been joining us live stream who've never been in our space. We welcome you when these doors open. We hope to see your face. So enjoy service today. And we're so excited to have you with us. Absolutely. And listen, let's get ready to experience God in a great way. So listen, say it with me. Win, build, serve. Let's get into our worship experience. Good morning. Good morning. So grateful for another day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So go on and worship and praise and give God a good hallelujah wherever you are. We want to give God everything we have only because he's worthy, just because he's righteous. We thank him, we thank him, we thank him. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We pray that you... God, continue to give them the strength and the fortitude that they need to walk as children of God during these dark hours. Continue to give them hope and a resolute mind to press on in Jesus' name, amen. So we thank God for this day. We thank God for this hour. We thank God for this very moment. Why? Because it wasn't promised to us. But he gifted us another minute. So we're going to tell him, thank you, Lord. Tragedies are commonplace, all kinds of diseases, people are slipping away, the economy's down and we can't get enough
you all out there know God is a way maker. Oh, don't fool me now. God has been so good to us. Amen. Listen, this morning, I know that normally, you know, we were together. We would probably start having testimony service right after hearing a song like that, that God is a way maker. Would you do this for me? Would you go ahead and in the comment section, would you go ahead and jot down how God has been making a way for you? Oh, go right ahead. We're going to go ahead. We're going to address some of them right now. Go ahead and say how God has been a way maker, how God has been making a way. Some of you all can testify. God's been taking better care of you during this pandemic than when you had everything was going well. Oh, don't fool me now. There are some of you all who can say God's been providing better for me without a job than when I was working 40 hours a week. My refrigerator is full. I got food to eat. My kids got something to eat. I got more energy than I ever had. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We're so grateful to our great God for his faithfulness and how he has been making a way out of no way. And I'm so grateful. Uh, I know that there are many who are who are uh, who are challenged throughout this time uh, because of the COVID-19 virus. And there are some of you all who are probably watching right now that you're ill uh, or sick right now. Um, but I am so grateful that I can say this, and I don't say it with arrogance, but it's with thanksgiving in my heart that we've had people, a part of the Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church, who have tested positive for the virus. But thanks be unto God that there hasn't been not one person that's died. You don't hear what I'm saying. Would you just give God praise in your living room that the blood is still working? It's still got wonder working power. There are some of you all who went in the grocery stores and in the hardware stores or you went to work with no mask. But thanks be to God that you weren't in the number. That didn't die. Amen. <laughs> oh, man, I'm looking at some of these comments of people pop, putting down saying, God, oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Brother Patrick. Brother Patrick put in there that him and his wife were tested positive for the coronavirus, but they're still living. I saw Sister Camille Travis put, God's been making sure that their refrigerator is full and has food to eat. Sister Charmaine Madlock put, God is a keeper, a provider. He blessed her to still have a job to work from home throughout this time. Listen, you ought to read those comments and be encouraged. Lift up your head, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory shall come in. You don't hear what I'm saying. It's time out for too many of us taking this as routine that God can still enter into your living room, into your kitchen. Glory be to God. Oh, you can see I'm ready this morning. I'm real ready to praise the Lord this morning. God's been so good to us this morning. He's been so kind. And I'm so grateful that even God has been blessing us as a church. I told you, I don't even know how, how all this stuff going to work out. But I told you, every single week, by God's grace, the Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church is going to stay on mission. Say it with me. Say, stay on mission. We're going to stay on mission because the mission has not changed since December 17, 1983. We just shortened it down a little bit, but we still went in the loss to follow Jesus Christ. And you may be saying, Brother Pastor, how is that possible? I, I got a testimony to tell you this past week on Wednesday, we were handing out masks. Actually, actually we handed out 1,400 masks. Can you give God praise for that? That we were able to hand out 1,400 masks to people who needed them right a part of our church and people who are part of our community. And, and you know how God has just been allowing for us to stay on mission. When we handed out the mask, there was a young man who gave his life to Jesus Christ while we were handing out masks. You don't hear what I'm saying. If you and I would just keep serving, God's got a way to still to keep connecting people to the kingdom. And so this week, what we're going to be doing is we have an opportunity that God has blessed us, that God's been unifying his church. Are y'all excited about this? I'm excited about this. The people who are concerned about competing with churches for people, it's foolishness. 
There are so many people who don't know Jesus Christ, and maybe you're watching this, that we want to see you be part of the church family, a part of God's family. And most importantly, we as the body of Christ throughout the city of Milwaukee are uniting together to bring about Mobilize MKE. Can we give God praise for that? Mobilize MKE. And so April 27th through May 9th, Oh, more than 20 churches across the greater Milwaukee area are working together to fill in the gap to help our food pantries as there are so many people that are in need. And you can believe it. One of the churches that's going to be helping out is the Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church. And so on our website, you will see a link there uh, under our events, events tab that says Mobilize MKE. We want you to go there and sign up to help us to collect the food that people will be bringing here uh, to the church, that we can get this in the hands of people who need it. Uh, also, the way this is going to work is that there are, there's a list that our media team has up in front of you of things that we want you to purchase. We want you, sir and ma'am, to please follow that list and purchasing things for individuals who are in need. And listen, I know there are some of you all right now because I, I know how the evil one works. He's telling you, you, you just got enough to take care of yourself. You shouldn't be buying nothing for nobody else. That's foolishness. Don't listen to that preacher. Well, guess what? Keep listening to the evil one and you're going to stay exactly where you at. But if you want to see you and your household prosper throughout this time, Jesus has already told us, give and it will be given unto you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will men give unto your bosom. You need more food in your house, start giving some away. You need some more money in your pocket, in your bank account, start giving some of it away. You need more energy and, and ingenuity to do, start giving some of it away and, and see and watch God not give you more than what you need. So listen, you thought that was it about how we as a church are going to continue to keep serving. Uh, we've also partnered with uh, Unite MKE that every Thursday, can you say it with me, every Thursday? Every Thursday, we're partnering uh, while this pandemic is going on to keep delivering meals to seniors. Can we give God praise for that? God is just blessing us as a church. We ain't standing still. We ain't sitting on our hands. We're still on mission of doing the work, and we're so grateful for Miss Bria Grant and Unite MKE to be a blessing and being able to do that. And so if you have an interest in coming alongside to help us with assembling mass, which we'll be doing this week, Monday through Wednesday from 9 a.m. until 4.30 p.m., or helping us with assembling meals or delivering meals uh, for seniors across the greater Milwaukee area, we want you to do this. We want you to email us at info, I-N-F-O, at embcmilwaukee.org and our administrative team will get back to you with uh, your inquiry of being a blessing. Are y'all ready to be a blessing? Would you type say, yeah, pastor, I'm ready to be a blessing to the city of Milwaukee. Amen. Well, we need you to partner with us to help us to keep bringing hope to a, to a world that's in need of hope. Uh, at this time, we want to go ahead and prepare ourselves to give, to be a blessing, uh, giving back to the Lord, which he is so graciously has given to us. And I'm asking you, sir and ma'am, to partner with us in giving hope. And listen, it's great to be able to volunteer time. It's great to be able to uh, help us deliver. But we also need you to join in uh, with us in giving financially to help us to stay on mission and to deliver on the mission of what God has commissioned this great church to be able to do. So are you ready to do that with us? Listen, here is the, you see from our media team, the, the way for you and I to be able to do this in a God-honoring way. Number one, we give to the, first of all, we want to make sure our relationships with other individuals are resolved. And after resolving our relationships with other people, we give to the Lord the tithe and the offering. Hear me now, my brother, my sister. God says to us in Malachi chapter three that it's not either or, it's both and. That we give to the Lord the tithe and offering. The offering is what you give to the Lord. The tithe belongs to the Lord. It's that first 10% that God has given to you. And then secondly, you pay yourself. And then you pay your bills on time. Listen, I know some of you all are listening to me right now. You're saying, Brother Preacher, they got a moratorium on all this stuff. I don't know how long all that's going to last. I know I got the money in my account. But I'm going to hold off on paying these bills. No, 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 no. Hear me well. 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 
The only way God can show him so strong in your life is you got to still follow the rules that have already been, in, been put in place. When you hold back on paying those utility companies, the cell phone company, the mortgage company, the money, and you have it in your possession, guess what? You're holding up things for somebody else to keep working. And listen, God's going to show himself faithful if you would just trust him. There's some of you all who next week when we talk about testimony time and talking about how God was a way maker, you're going to say, God, pay my, I don't even know what I'm, how, how all of it worked out. God let, I, I, I figured it out on paper, but when I wrote all the checks, when I did all the online bill payments, I still had money left over to put gas in a car. Listen, you don't hear what I'm saying. I'm trying to move on for a moment. Do you see what the Lord is doing to make sure you and I have what we need? I went to the gas pump and I was sitting there with my wife and I said, $30 filled this car up? When is the last, most of you all, I don't know what kind of car you got. When is the last time $30 filled your car up? But gas, less than $2 a gallon, and it's going to keep going down. And I want to say to some of you all right now, because listen, I'm going to show you the value of God's church, specifically the black church. We don't only just get fed God's word, but we get insight about how to move ahead and maneuver through all this time. Let me give some of y'all some insight. Start investing in oil companies right now while the price is low. Because when folks get back into driving their cars, guess what's going to happen? The price going to go back up. And for every share that you got invested into that, that oil company, guess what's going to happen? You're going to make money. And that's going to lead into generational wealth. Y'all hear what I'm saying? See, some of y'all, y'all thinking about how to consume. and how, That's how poor people stay poor. They hoard all the stuff that they got and they hold on to it, afraid to let it go. But you got to be willing to take risks. We ain't going to be, listen. You can't help people if you ain't got no money. So I'm saying to you all, let's start thinking wise. Let's start figuring out how to maneuver through all of this. And I'm saying to you chocolate people that are out there, we're going to go ahead and get ready to give. Listen, when the Spanish flu broke out, you know what happened? Colored people who didn't have a lot became some of the most inventive people around. That's how Black Wall Street got started. Google that and figure it out. You saw more black people who didn't have businesses start creating businesses and thriving because they were using a little bit that they had at their disposal to start creating their own streams of income. Listen, there's some of you all, God's letting your job stay closed because he's knocking on your heart to say, I need you to take a risk, take a chance and walk in with me and I'll show you I can provide more than enough. Let's get ready to give to the Lord. If you have your device, you can join us in giving by giving through the Giveify app. Um, to be a blessing to this church, you'll find the Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church. Let's hold our devices high. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless our gifts. Father in heaven, thank you now for all you've done for us. I thank you for the provision that you have shown us. And I thank you for the miracles that you will still continue to do. I thank you, Lord God, that the testimonies will be endless of your people being able to speak to the wonders and the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you for you raising people off of their bed of affliction. I thank you for you bringing people from their time of mourning to sadness. I thank you for you replacing depression with joy. I thank you for removing anxiety right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now, Lord God, for taking your people from lack to abundance. I thank you for the ingenuity, Lord God, that you're giving to the minds of your people to move from just scraping to get by to be becoming people who, who, who will no longer just be the borrowers, but will become the lenders. Thank you right now, Lord God, that the Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church can say in unison, we will be the head and not the tail. Say it with me. I will be the head and not the tail. I will be above only and not beneath. I will be the lender and not the borrower. We thank you for it right now. And we shout hallelujah for it already being done. In Jesus' name, amen. You're in the hands of our praise team to give to the Lord. Amen. We're going to give a nod to our old friend John P. Key. And we're going to sing, Oh, how wondrous is the name of the Lord. Come on, if you know, can sing with me. And we say, Oh, how wonderful oh, how wonderful is the name. Is the name. How we worship. How we worship. His name is to be adored. God, our 
has given to us we're so grateful that this is the day that the Lord has made we ought to rejoice we ought to rejoice we ought to rejoice and be glad in it listen I'll tell you this morning my brother and my sister if you will begin to give God thanks you will see your whole attitude in your house begin to shift if you would just tell him thanks and we're so grateful to see our God working in, uh, in our lives and in the life of God's church Listen, let me say this to you, and then we're going to dive into uh, our time of sharing this morning. This might be tough for some of you all to digest, but this is the best time to be alive as a follower of Jesus Christ. Listen, my brother, my sister, you know what's the great thing about this? You and I are going to live to tell a story that if it was possible... It would be written right alongside of what God did for Abraham, Moses, Jacob, and there are all the other biblical characters in here when you and I get to talk about how God brought us over. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm looking forward to if Jesus delays his coming of being able to tell my grandkids about how God brought us over throughout this time. Hey, Amen. Are you excited to dive into God's word? Amen. Before we do that, I want to ask if you would to do this for us. Would you like and share and start a watch party of, uh, of this worship experience that it would help us with reaching people with the good news of Jesus Christ? And also, we want to remind you all about uh, our mission of what we're doing this month together as a church of focusing on who's that one individual. Who's that one individual that you and I ought to be praying for, that we ought to be evangelizing? And I want to encourage you to visit our website at embcmilwaukee.org. And under the tab that says EMBC Family, you'll see it says, who's your one? And you'll be able to uh, pray along with that 30-day prayer guide to be praying for that one individual who does not know Jesus Christ. Hear me now closely, my brother, my sister. We're not talking about people who stop going to church for a week or two before all this stuff. To my either people who have not placed their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or individuals that have been out of church for more than five years. Would you do that with us? And then also email us and let us know uh, who that one individual is. I want to invite you to grab your copy of God's Word and meet us in Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I'm starting at verse 17. Luke chapter 5. In verse 17 and reading down to verse 26 uh, says these words and we'll be reading from the New American Standard uh, Bible and ask for you to read along with us uh, as we read God's word and we're going to read this with life and emphasis and understanding this is the life transforming the life giving word of God and it says this one day he was teaching and there were some Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. And some men who were carrying on a bed a man 
who was paralyzed. And they were trying to bring him in and to set him down in front of him. But not finding any way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on a roof and let him down through the tiles with his stretcher into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. And seeing their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Lord Jesus, help us today. The scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this man who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But Jesus, aware of their reasonings, answered and said to them, why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins have been forgiven you? Or to say, get up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up and pick up your stretcher and go home. Immediately he got up before them, picked up what he had been lying on, and went home glorifying God. This is where we're going to stop. And they were all struck with astonishment. Lord Jesus. <laughs> they were all struck with astonishment. I'm just trying to move on from there. And began glorifying God. And they were filled with fear saying, we have seen remarkable things today. Listen, today for the time that you and I have together, I like the title of this text in our exchange. Just simply unleash the power of the Lord. Unleash the power of the Lord of the Lord. I ask if you would to bow your heads with us for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you now for all you've done for us. Thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness. Thank you for your grace that has been poured out on us. And we ask you now, Lord God, that you would forgive us of everything that we have done that's been contrary to your will. I ask now, Lord God, that you would strengthen me to preach to your people and I pray, Lord God, this morning that you would strengthen the hearts of your people. God, there are some who've lost loved ones and weren't even afforded the opportunity to grieve like the rest of us have when we've had individuals to transition from this life to the next. I pray now that you would comfort their grieving heart throughout this time. I pray now, Lord God, for the sick, wherever they are, those that have the COVID-19 virus and also those who have aches and pains those suffering with headaches, the individuals with high blood pressure or kidney failure. I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would heal their bodies, that you would do something miraculous this morning. And Lord God, we're asking right now that most importantly, the individual who is in their sin, unaware of it, I pray that you would save them today, that you would transform their hearts. And I pray, Lord God, that this morning you will revive your church that's been on life support and breathe life into it, that we will be individuals who won't sit on the sideline waiting for things to happen, but we will join ourselves with you to see you do the supernatural, the remarkable, that when all of it is said and done, we will say that we have seen remarkable things done today. Thank you for you doing these things now in your son Jesus' name. Amen. This last week Sunday, just like many of you all, I sat on the edge of my seat as ESPN moved quickly to unveil a docu-series simply called The Last Dance. The Last Dance, my brothers and sisters, prompted a whole lot of people to bring out their fresh Jordans. For some of you all that are sneakerheads or live throughout the 90s, you know them simply as J's. You made sure you put on those Jordans, those J's, your Jordan gear. You made sure that you took out the Jordans that didn't have no creases. Because you know if you're really going to rock them right, they can't have creases if you're taking care of them, a few of my sneakerheads that are out there. But there are a lot of us who lived throughout the 90s and remember seeing the, the awesome twosome of Jordan and Pippen. Oh, don't get it twisted, my dear brothers and sisters. This was Batman and Robin on the basketball court. It was Mr. Air Jordan himself, along with not just a sidekick, but one of the, the 50 greatest players who ever played the game of basketball. 
Shame on your soul, Mr. Cross, for paying Scottie Pippen that ridiculous contract. Forgive me now. Let me get back to the scheduled sermon that's supposed to be said this morning. But what we see, my brothers and sisters, in, in, in looking at this, with that, was that with much anticipation, every time the Chicago Bulls arrived in a city, there was a heightened expectation. There was a, there was a change in the air. Because every individual knew who walked through the turnstiles of that arena that the Bulls would be playing against or playing in. Knew that there was a great opportunity that they were going to witness something that had never been done before. Oh, my brothers and sisters, what if God's church every time it gathered had that same energy and focus that every time I step through the doors, every time I gather with other believers, I'm expecting to see God do something that has never been done before. We have conventions and gather in our little groups. And we talk about how intelligent we are and how much knowledge we have of God's word. And in all of it, we expect God to do nothing of the supernatural in which we have never done, been seen or done before. Well, I'm here to let some of you all know who might be watching. The Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church and Pastor Raymond Monk will no longer be participating in any of that type of foolishness anymore. Because there's too much that's at stake in this world that God has people that are in need of a life change they are in need of, the, of being free from the shackles of sin that there's too much at stake to keep playing games because God's power needs to be unleashed this morning my dear brothers and sisters this text is simply tailored to teach you and I that God's power requires individuals who have faith it requires individuals who are willing to take a risk. And it requires individuals who are expecting for God to do something great every single time I encounter him. Look here with me at Luke chapter 5, verse 17. It shows you and I that you and I should not become consumed about talking about the Savior that we Miss the Savior. Oh, Lord Jesus. Let me say it one more time. Don't become consumed talking about the Savior. That you simply miss the Savior. Could you see this, my dear brothers and sisters? Would you use your holy imagination with me? Jesus the Christ has started his public preaching ministry. Not only has he started his public preaching ministry after 30 years of life lived, but as Jesus begins his, his preaching ministry, his healing ministry, the word of what Jesus has been able to do has spread like wildfire. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, it causes for every person that hears about Jesus and they hear that Jesus is even in the vicinity of their home to drop what they're doing and get to wherever Jesus is as quickly as possible. Oh, Lord Jesus, what if we had people who, who sensed and understood that God was at work and instead of focusing on what others are doing and getting caught up on what's happening over here and scrolling all day long through Instagram and Facebook would find themselves saying, what do I need to do to get connected to the Savior? And so we see, my dear brothers and sisters, the Pharisees and the teachers, they hear about Jesus being in their vicinity. And like everyone else, they rush to the scene to get to the Savior. But their intentions were not to see and to experience God in a way that they had never experienced him before. Their reasoning for gathering was to question Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. There's some of you all who know the book frontwards and backwards. And rather than understanding that the gospel is about people, not doctrine, not simply theology, but it's about 
people. Oh, listen, I know there's a news flash for some of you all that, that these buildings were erected not, to, not as monuments, not, a, not as something to just say, look at what we've done. That the, Every seat that's in there, every pew that's in there, every entrance, every door, every bathroom, every stall, every instrument, every praise team member, every preacher, it's all about people. And we've lost sight like these Pharisees. We find ourselves sitting around arguing, trying to protect God's church. We're standing outside of God's church as, as holy bodyguards and, 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 and doormen deciding on who comes in and who goes out. God forbid and, and have mercy on your soul if you're watching this because for whatever reason you're watching this and you're part of leadership and, and you've handcuffed the, the man of God that he can't even do the work for caring for people. I know it's divine that you're watching this right now. I don't care what your title is. the preacher like a puppet but you don't understand that when the man came there he had vision he had ingenuity he had drive he had passion but some of you all are so guilty for draining the man and the woman of God from being concerned about people because you want to control them like puppets and so we see these Pharisees they rush to get to the side of Jesus not to ask him about kingdom business, but to question him about simply who he is. And, and so we find that these men are so consumed with, with explaining themselves and putting on display their earthly knowledge that they miss that God has something greater than that to offer. And so we see entering stage left. Another group of people who hear about Jesus being in their vicinity and they drop everything. There's a sense of urgency that they have. They muster up the, the resources that they have at their disposal. They, they don't hesitate to get themselves caught up in the latest TV show or get distracted by, by what others have to say or, or, or even doing foolishness like going to parties during a pandemic with masks on your face when they told us to stay at home. And enter in a group of people who show you and I that rather than get consumed in, in your knowledge about God, that they show to you and I that faith is required to unleash the power of God. Hear me now, my brothers and sisters. It's not academic knowledge that unleashes the power of God. It's faith that unleashes the power of God. Did you hear what I said? It takes faith to unleash the power of God. Because there's too many of us that got a whole lot of intellectual knowledge, but don't have no faith. We'll talk about what God can do, but won't do nothing. Sitting around here talking about my God can and he will make a way and won't he do it, but you won't. And entering in are four individuals who partner together to exercise faith. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, if it makes sense, it don't make faith. What does a man hope for that he already possess? If I hope for it, there's no reason for me to be concerned about possessing it. But if I don't possess it, that's what I hope for. And we see these men or women, whoever they were, they exercise faith. Hear me now, my brothers and sisters. Not for themselves, but for somebody else. Lord Jesus, help me now. Lord Jesus. 
See, there are some of you all who are so selfish and self-centered. You willing to take risk for you and yours. But, but are you willing to take a risk and take a chance on doing for somebody else? These men, wearied and tired, they, they continue to trek along throughout the hot sun of the Middle East. They, they battle and face the, the harsh windstorms that, that they would have been faced with. They, they endure the hardship of hydration and being out of breath as they care for and carry a paralyzed man while he's still on his mat. They don't let the hardship of carrying this man for whatever unknown distance it was to get to Jesus, distract them from the mission. Oh, hear me now. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> There's some of you all right now who are on the verge of throwing up your hands and giving up on God because of the hardship that you had to endure for six weeks now, maybe 10 weeks. And, and, and you know what these four men or women say to you and I? That, that teamwork makes the dream work. Oh, hear me now, my brothers and sisters, that there comes a time, and I want to say to you, those of you who are out there right now, it's okay to be weary. It's okay to be tired. It's okay to be disgusted. It's okay to recognize I've had, I've taken all that I can, and, and I've taken all that I could, and I feel like giving up. I feel like laying down on the side of the road, but there's beauty in teamwork because when I see my fellow brother or sister falling by the side, I don't let them fall down by themselves, but before they hit the ground I reach out and grab their hand to pull them back up I don't stand on the side and look at them and laugh at them and say why didn't you just keep on walking why didn't you just keep on holding on to God's unchanging hand but as they get weary as they get discouraged I tell them to keep holding on because for these men or women who were carrying this man, and I believe the Bible says they, they were men as they were carrying this man who was paralyzed they understood there was something that was more important than themselves that they were carrying, Lord Jesus. What if there were some of us who would keep laying on our faces and stand on our knees even though it feels uncomfortable because we understood that somebody else's life was at stake? What if there were some of us who were willing to sacrifice and turn the plate down to fast, not for you getting a car or a house, not for your baby to get better even though they're sick, but what if there were some of us who were saying there's somebody else's life that's at stake? God, I'm praying for so-and-so to get up off the hospital bed. I'm praying, Lord God, for the curve to, to flatten, not because I want to get back to work, but because I'm concerned about people. And so these men, they show us that, that not only is faith required, but getting some people to Jesus takes a team effort. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh. Could you see them, my brother, my sister? Some of them, maybe in their, one of them maybe in their 50s, getting starting to get arthritis, unable to start to walk up hills, couldn't carry that one man by himself. If it was two of them, if they were just to try to carry him like a, like a pogo stick walking up the hill, the sheer weight with the wind blowing up against them would have made it too hard and too difficult. If it was three of them trying to carry the one man, the, the balance would have been off as they would have been carrying him on the mat that he would have slipped off the mat and possibly hurt himself further. But there were some of them who understood that the four men who are carrying this paralyzed man, that we need all of y'all to get, get this man to Jesus. Oh, come closely now, Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church. In order for the people of the great city of the city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to come to knowledge about the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It doesn't just, it will not only just take the Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church to, to get the work done, to, to hurl in all the people who don't know Jesus Christ as Savior and as Lord. But, but if it's the Ephesians Church who works with Christ the King Church, there's a few that we can carry to get them to Jesus. 
But, but if it's just the, the Ephesians Missionary Baptist Church and, and Holy Redeemer who works together to bring some to Jesus, we, don't, we get some but not all. But if we start to bring together the Catholic brothers and sisters, the Protestant brothers and sisters, the Pentecostal brothers and sisters, and dare I say, our Baptist brothers and sisters, and we bring all of God's children together, there's nothing that you and I can't do because God wants to reveal and unleash the power of God on this earth. And they say to you and I that when people are working together in teams and they're waiting and want to see the power of God be unleashed, faith requires for you and I to accept, hear me now, brothers and sisters, or hear me now, write this one down. Faith requires for you and I to not simply settle for waiting for your turn. You don't hear what I'm saying. When you got faith and you really believe that Jesus can, I'm not going to wait in line because you've been walking with God longer to see him do it and then wait for my turn. But when I understand the urgency that Jesus can, I ain't going to let nothing stop me. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. There's some of you all who got to understand that when it comes to experiencing and receiving all that God has to offer, I'm going to do it like Rick Ross. I'm going to push it to the limit. I'm going to push it to the limit. I'm going to push and I'm going to press and I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop because somebody looks at me cross-eyed. I'm not going to stop pursuing God for, for what he told me that he already promised to me. Because when I come back into God's house and somebody sits too close to me or they don't have on a mask, I'm going to give up on God. But these men say to you and I that no matter the obstacle, we got to be concerned about getting people to Jesus. If you're some pastor that's concerned about the members who part of your church, if they're going to start watching other people, you're concerned about the wrong thing. So what? There's some of them watching right now. I'm going to tell you right now. There's some of them watching right now who, who they name on the road here at Ephesians. They're not going to come back here. They've been started watching somebody else and they feel like that's the place. God speed to you. But, but rather than being concerned about swapping baseball cards with some cards that you already got already, how about we focus on doing a real mission of getting people to place their faith in Jesus Christ and seeing them be baptized, seeing some new people walk into the door, not just swapping folks from one church to the other. That ain't accomplishing the mission. The mission is make new disciples of the world. And so these men, Lord Jesus, they show us that when we work together as a team, hear me now, their concern is about one man, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Whoo, Lord Jesus. Let me just say this to you all on the behalf of, of pastors, some of them all across the world. Some of us got so concerned about the number of people we preach to on a Sunday morning that we've forgotten that every time we stand, it's about connecting with one person. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's about looking at one person and being concerned about the one individual who needs to give their life to Jesus. And you're saying, Brother Pastor, there's a whole lot of people that's part of my family. There's a whole lot of people at my job who don't know Jesus Christ. But God says to you and I, if we would just give all of our time and attention and energy to one, one person is sufficient. And so we see here, my dear brothers and sisters, that not only is... Teamwork important in the effort. But the Bible shows you and I in verse 20 that there is a there is a there is a underlining condition beyond what you see that's affecting people's lives. Look here with me at Luke chapter 5 and verse 20. 
Jesus, after seeing these men who don't settle for simply getting to the house where Jesus is, Lord, Lord Jesus, can I speak to a few of you all this morning who are watching me or whatever time it may be? That when you get into the house of God, you got to have such a determined mind that I'm not going to let nothing stop me from getting to Jesus. I'm so sick of this stupid foolishness of church people talking about church hurt. When you understand really who Jesus is, you don't let nothing get in the, nothing get in the way of you getting to Jesus. Somebody took your parking spot that you've been parking in for 25 years. So what? They sat in your favorite seat. So what? They didn't let you sing your favorite song. Guess what? Say it with me. So what? You're absolutely right. Guess what? They don't never let you lead the, the do nothing committee. Guess what? Guess what? Hey, the, the ministry that you wanted to start, they wouldn't let you be out front. And guess what? God says that don't none of that stuff matter because when it comes down to getting to Jesus, you got to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Listen, if I got to if I got to go to church by myself and my husband going to keep sitting on the couch, guess what? I'm going to keep pressing to get to Jesus. If I, if I got to go by myself and the kids don't want to go, I'm going to press to go. Because guess what? What Jesus got to offer me is way too valuable. Brother preacher, if I can say this to you, if the people stop giving, if, if you can't live in the parsonage no more, if your house gets repossessed, guess what? You got to keep your mind and your eyes focused on the Lord that what God's got to offer me is way greater than all this other stuff that you got to have your mind made up to say so what I'm going to press my way anyway but they show us that when these men get to this house and the house is so packed out with people they can't get this man into the house they try to be kind and polite and say excuse me we carrying a paralyzed man would you let us get by and, and somebody look back at him and says you know what man you out your mind nigga you know how long I've been standing in this line trying to get to Jesus oh come on now let me bring it to your version because you know that's how some of you all will, re will react you'll have your mask over your face and take your mask down and say listen I ain't gonna say it one more time the line's back there ain't no handicap entrance to get to Jesus I've been standing out in this sun all day long Then there's a few of you all, you try to go around the other way because there's so many people trying to get into Jesus. As you go around to the window, there's grandmama standing there who lifts up her jacket to say, nah, son, not today. But then there's some of them. Hear me now. Hear me now. This is the importance of the fellowship of staying connected with believers. Because I could see in my sanctified imagination that there was one who was in the group that said, hey, fellas, we did all we could to get him here. But there was somebody in the group who said, listen here, I don't know about you, but I didn't trek all this way to get all the way here to get just this close and not get this man to Jesus. Oh, come closely, my dear brothers and sisters. There's a few of you all out there right now. You're afraid to get connected with other folks. There's some of you all who got, who got this negative mind syndrome that's ingrained in your mind that the soon as you see an obstacle, the first thing you say is we can't, it can't be done, it'll never happen. But can I say to you this morning, you ought to repent and ask God to forgive you because I love the way the Bible says this, that with him, all things are possible to them who believe. I can see what I'm saying. You know what? I think there's a way we can get him to Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus, hear me now. I could imagine the person who came up with the suggestion to lift the man up and put him on the roof was the, 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 the newest convert of the group. <laughs> and I could see one of those older men carrying the mat, saying, man, are you out your mind? We can't carry a paralyzed man up, a, 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 up, up on top of a roof. 
And you know what the young person said? Yes, there is. There is a way we could do it. I got a few dollars in my pocket. If we go over here and buy a pulley, we could get it done. And I see over there, there's a rope manufacturer. That's right over there. And if we go get connect with the rope manufacturer and get a few buttons, we could put it in, put buttons on the, on the corners of his mat that we can start to use a pulley system and raise him up slowly to get him up on top of the roof. And when we get up on top of the roof, you don't understand that the way I got these muscles of being able to help you all to carry this man this far was that in my room when people used to pick on me when I was in school I used to do push-ups on my knuckles that you don't understand how strong my knuckles are now that I know how this roof is made that I don't need a shovel that when we get up there because I'm so concerned about this man I'll punch my way through the through, through the through the straw through the wood to make a way to make sure that my brother gets to Jesus And guess what happens? When they lower him down in front of Jesus, hear me now. Because this is why some of you all are afraid of coming to Jesus. Jesus sees past your outer shell and the smoke and mirrors to see what the real issue is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, sir. God is able to see past the outer shell of what you've been putting on to see that the real issue is not a physical issue. It's a sin issue. And I'm here to warn somebody today that you've let the pressures of this coronavirus that sin is consuming you, it's taking control of your life, that this man says something to you and I, that sin neglected leads to paralysis. <laughs> you don't hear what I'm saying. You keep going back to that pet sin, it will lead to Paralysis. Oh, okay, I get it. There's a few of you all who don't understand what paralysis is. Paralysis means you can't use your legs or your arms. You're completely reliant on other people to take care of you. Listen, keep dipping and diving and slipping out, slipping in and out on your spouse, whom you're married to. God says he got a way of making sure that Something much greater than, than just being in a house, being confined to being in a house. But he says that the sin will lead to you becoming paralyzed. You'll see your money start to slow up. You'll see your health begin to decline. Uh, and, and, and what the Bible shows to you and I is that this man quite possibly, his paralysis didn't happen overnight. It was day by day. He didn't even realize it. He was losing his ability to be creative. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Brother Preacher, I can speak to you and, and I'll, listen, I know confession is not good for the reputation, but it's good for the soul. That when you allow sin to penetrate your life, you can't do spiritual work with sin in your life. You will see the effectiveness of what God gifted you to do. See it slowly begin to decline. Brother musician, you play that as instruments all day long. And God will show that his spirit is not with you. That slowly he is causing paralysis to set in place. Brother pastor, you wonder what happened to your vision. God says that you got sin in your life. And when you get rid of the sin, you will see the paralysis begin to end. You're not a poor parent. You got sin in your life. You're not just poor because your mama and them was poor. You got sin in your life. Your business, it's not that you got a bad idea. You got sin in your life. You can't serve people like you're supposed to because you got sin in your life. And Jesus shows you and I, there's
there's something that's of greater significance than just your outside issue. It's a sin issue. But thanks be unto God that we got somebody who's greater than aspirin, that we got someone greater than a ventilator. We got something greater than just to sustain you, but you and I got the blood of Jesus. I'm so glad that the blood is still working, that it's still able to reach the highest of heights, and it's still able to reach the lowest of lows, and it will never, say it with me, it'll never, it'll never lose its power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. People think I've always had it together like this. It's just that God had to get rid of some sin that was in my life. When he got rid of the sin, then my life started to function like it was supposed to. But thanks be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Mm. Do you know what is so disturbing? As I keep looking at this passage of scripture, Is that there was only, there was only four of them, Lord Jesus, who were able to see that this man's issue was greater than just his paralysis. Ooh, Lord Jesus, I'm mighty afraid that there's churches full of hundreds and thousands of people that all they see, they think is just a material need. Listen, we're here to meet people's material need that in exchange, it's an exchange happening that as we give them food, we gonna meet them the spiritual food that they need. Cause listen, they might be poor right now, but they need something more than just a can of corn and some green beans. But as we exchange that can of corn, we gonna give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I say to you, and I'm asking for a few extra minutes, hear me now for a moment. If you were part of the crowd that saw this man that was paralyzed, would you be one of the four who would see that it's a spiritual issue with this man? Our churches are packed full of people that we're so carnal-minded, all we see is surface stuff and not spiritual matters. Because if there were more people who saw this as a spiritual matter, I believe by God's grace, it would have been more than four people who would have helped carry that man to get him to Jesus. It would have been hundreds of people to say, you know what, this brother needs to get connected with Jesus because when he get connected to Jesus, everything else will begin to work out. But Jesus shows you and I something with this. Hear me now, brothers and sisters. That understanding this was a sin issue. And also understanding that, that time is valuable. Hear me now, closely, brothers and sisters. Time is more valuable than it's ever been before. That they don't say, well, you know what, we'll wait till Jesus get close nearby. We'll get this man to Jesus. No, 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 no. They made up their mind with a sense of urgency to say, we got to get him, this man, to Jesus now. Can I say to you, parent, have you considered your grown son needs to get connected to Jesus now? No, 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 no. Don't. We ain't talking about waiting until the doors of the church open, physical doors. Mm -mm. I'm talking about you need to be witnessing to get them to Jesus now. Right now. And so what happens is this, these men show you and I that it is so important to get men to Jesus to meet their, their spiritual need because the, the spiritual need is greater than the material need that I love the way that Daniel Webster put this. Daniel Webster was asked a question by someone to say, what is the most important question that ever occupied his mind? He simply responded, the most important thought that ever occupied his mind was his individual responsibility to God. 
How many of you all right now are, 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 are at the top of your list is your concern about your responsibility to God? Or is your mind consumed with how I'm going to get a new house? How I'm going to get a new car? Uh, what clothes my kids are going to wear when they go back to school? Uh, 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 I've been sitting in the house now for eight weeks if you're living in Wisconsin, and I ain't been able to go get my hair did. So you're so consumed about going to get a, a 1B 18, uh, 18 inch uh, silk black uh, yaki uh, 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 Brazilian um, do job. And, 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 and God is saying to you and I, have you thought about your, your responsibility to God? Do you know what really blew my mind the more I kept thinking about this passage of scripture? Was that they were, they carried a man who couldn't even do for himself. I love the way the founding pastor of this church, Reverend Joe Todd, used to put it. He would always say people can only do the best they can with the mind that they have. Could you imagine this man who was paralyzed and didn't really understand what led to him being paralyzed and he did not understand that there was a remedy to be able to help him and, and there were some other folks who understood what his issue was and made up their mind and say, we're just not going to settle for the state that we see this brother in, but we're going to get him some help. But lastly, and I'm out your way, verse 26 says to you and I, that when God's power is available, when God's power is readily available to be unleashed, it requires people who have faith. It requires teamwork to get some individuals to Jesus Christ. It requires you and I to begin to start seeing things in, in their spiritual state and not just the material state. That lastly, it shows you and I that when God's power is unleashed, it reveals the power of faith and it exposes the spiritually paralyzed. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Could you see this, my brothers and sisters? And I'm out your way. The roof opening. And down below, right next to Jesus, sitting in a circle, are individual men. Who, who, are so, who are so concerned and so consumed with showing their academic proudness and displaying what schools that they went to and, and bringing up what this person had to say uh, about the scriptures and, and trying to, to try to say something to wow other people's minds or maybe even impress some nice young lady who's off to the side to show how spiritual they are. And out of nowhere, the roof begins to fall apart. Sand and dust begins to fall down. And the sunlight from outside begins to shine on the inside of this man's house. As they're sitting there, these Pharisees and teachers are sitting by looking at what's happening as this man is slowly being lowered down in front of Jesus. That, that when, when the man up top who lowered the man down to Jesus... They, 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 say, they say, Jesus, would you just heal our friend? And, and, and you know what these men did? Who, oh Lord Jesus, who were sitting around Jesus, these religious teachers, they started saying to them, why didn't you just wait in line? We sitting here talking to Jesus about some greater matters. Don't you understand? That ain't how we do it here. Don't you know you're supposed to wait your turn? Don't you know if you're going to bring him to Jesus, he ain't supposed to come dressed like that? Couldn't you find a better mat to put him on? Don't you see his socks got holes in them? Don't you know that he stinks, that he ain't took a bath? Don't you know he's sweaty, this, that, and the third? Can't you make an appointment to talk to Jesus? Oh, excuse me, not for a moment. I could imagine the, the armor bearers for Jesus standing around saying, guess what? Uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know how we get down now. We got this thing down like the FBI. Uh, there was a few of them who started speaking into their sleeve and saying, we got we to gotta issue up on the roof, uh, uh, brother, brothers. We need y'all to go up on the roof. There's some folks trying to get to, get to the healer. 
and, 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 and these men show you and I not only that, that God was able to heal this man of his issue and to reveal that it was a sin issue, but he shows that there's some people who've been sitting around Jesus far too long who don't even understand the power of God to do the supernatural, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think, that Jesus is still able to heal. God is still able to deliver. He still opens jail doors. He still makes ways out of no ways that he is the great I am. The whole time they sitting around Jesus. They don't understand what they have. There's some of us who need to ask God to forgive us. Coming to church out of ritual, not even expecting anything. We come here with issue after issue, week after week. And consumed with the wrong thing. And I apologize to you, my brother, my sister. You tried your best to get to Jesus. And there were some of us who just got in the way. I apologize for every pastor who looked at you strange. I apologize, my brother, for pastors who told you to pull up your pants before you came to give your life to Jesus. I'm talking to those of you who are, who are transgender. You changed yourself from a man to a woman, and they told you before you could give your life to Jesus, go back and reverse that thing that God says, I don't care about how you came. I'll take you just as you are. I don't want you to get consumed with none of that foolishness. Come just like you are. Drunk, hot, gay, straight, black, white, Asian, rich or poor. He says, come just as you are. Come just as you are. I know you might be watching this, you're saying, Brother Preacher, I, I want to come to Jesus. But I just don't know how. Nobody ever thought enough of me to, to try to get me to Jesus. And I want to say to you, I'm sorry, I apologize. But God loves you enough that he didn't want to just leave you there like that. He says, I got a way. Even though you wouldn't physically walk into the building, I'll fix it so that while you're watching from your phone, you can get to me. And even though you may not even have your own phone, you might be watching it on somebody else's. Or you didn't even know about a church, you just was watching somebody else's watch party and you started watching this and God pricked your heart that you understood it's time to give your life to him. He says, now is the day. Now is the day. You might be saying, you know what, preacher, I'll give my life to Jesus when I get myself straight. Guess what? If you could, you would have did it a long time ago. But you can't do it by yourself. God's power wants to be unleashed in you. Would you do this now, my brother, my sister? Listen, here is the power of God to be displayed in your life. Listen, I don't want you to think about nobody else. I'm talking directly to you. God is so powerful. He wants to take the thing that shamed you, that paralyzed you, and begin to use it for his glory. But all he needs you to do is give your life to him. Would you do this now? I know it's hard. You're saying, I've been doing this for far too long. There's so many people who know that I've messed up. God says, I still want to use you. I love you so much. I want to take exactly what you use to destroy your life and use it to encourage others that if they give their life to me, I can turn their life around like I did you. Don't you think for one moment all the people that are watching this are squeaky clean. We done did some stupid stuff. We done messed over on our wives. We done messed over on our husbands. 
We done messed up on our finances. We done had good businesses and ran them in the ground. And God says, guess what? We walk around with our stuff as a trophy of God's grace. That Jesus still saves. Would you give God an opportunity today? Would you pray this prayer with me? Would you say, dear God, forgive me for what I've done. I recognize your son Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he was buried in the third day. God the Father raised him from the dead. And I ask you now to be Lord of my life, be master of my life. And I ask you to save me now. If you prayed that prayer with us, guess what? We welcome you to the family of God. We want to celebrate you. Would you tell us, would you write in the comment section and say, Pastor, that was me. I, I, I want to walk with Jesus Christ. Would you visit embcmilwaukee.org and select become a member and let us know that you want to start walking with Jesus. We discharge our duty, yet there is still at the cross. Let's give God praise for the word today that we've heard. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to say to you as we end this time together this morning, God's calling on you and I to unleash his power to the world. Those men, the Bible says that he was ready to heal. Do you hear what I'm saying? He was ready to heal. He came prepared to heal. You're one. God's waiting on you to do the work, to talk to them that he's ready to heal. He's ready to move in their heart to, to cash in the chips and give up, give up everything that they've been doing and surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. He's going to use the things that others knew that they were using to destroy themselves and to use it for Satan's glory, that God's going to flip that thing around and use it for his glory. And I know there's some young people that are out there right now. Guess what? When you start walking with Jesus, you're going to be able to speak like your grandmama and them. They say, guess what? I know what God can do because guess what? I got receipts, baby. I got receipts to talk about what God can do if you would give your life to him. Listen, we want to invite you uh, tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. My wife, Miss Camille Monk, will be starting a uh, devotional time with women. Uh, called Morning Reflections at 7.30 a.m. So ladies, please set your alarm. Fellas, also to be encouraged. I want to invite you to join us on Wednesday at 7 p.m. as we'll continue with our Bible study series of Get Your Mind Right with our own licensed counselor, professional counselor, Ms. Lauren Todd. Listen, pray for each other, love each other, and most importantly, don't give up on that one person God gave to you. It's all about one person. Let us pray now and let you go. Father in heaven, thank you now for what you've done and what you've spoken to us today. I thank you for the supernatural power that you have used through the use of the internet to reach homes all across this nation. I thank you now, Lord God, for you setting someone free, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord Jesus. We relish in your presence, Lord God of understanding who we serve and whose presence that we're in. We ask you now, Lord God, to create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. We ask you to forgive us now for putting our eyes on other people. And we ask you now to do a work in us. Sanctify our homes right now in the name of Jesus. We take back what the devil stole for us right now in the name of Jesus. We take our homes back in the name of Jesus. We take our marriages back in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now that we're going to move past our shame and past our pride. That as soon as this broadcast is over, we're going to call our sister. We're going to call our brother. And we're going to tell them about who our one is. And we're going to ask them to partner with us to get our one to Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing. I thank you right now, Lord God, the, the, the man-made barriers that men set up to divide your church. We cast those things down in the name of Jesus. I thank you for you bringing the Baptists and the Kojic together. 
I thank you for you bringing the, the Pentecostal and the Lutheran to do God's work together. I thank you for the non-denominational church, Lord God, working that all of God's church will work together. That we'll all become consumed, consumed with being concerned with souls. God, I ask you to forgive us for seeing people by their color and not about their condition of their soul. I ask you to have mercy on us. That there's some of us who are so concerned about a dollar, we're forgetting about people in the midst of this pandemic. Unify us now. Strengthen our hands and our feet to do your work. Strengthen our minds and our eyes, Lord God. Increase resources into our hands right now in the name of Jesus. I still thank you for you paying this mortgage off. I don't care who hears it. I thank you in advance and I praise you right now, Lord God, for this church having more than enough to help people. We cancel the enemy's plan right now in the name of Jesus. That even though people who've been around you for years won't sow, won't give, that you're going to touch the hands and the hearts of people who never stepped foot in this church, who will never cross the state line of Wisconsin. That supernaturally you will do what needs to be done for your house to continue to do the work of the Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness and you doing it now. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you right now, Lord God, for your hand of protection being upon your people. That your people will not get sick. That you will heal bodies. You will save marriages. We thank you for you doing these things now in your son Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. You all have a great week. We'll see you all soon.